Hi everyone and welcome to today's stream. Don't know how long we're going to be doing this for. Depends on how long everybody stays asleep for. Right. So in the previous video I just started putting down a base layer on the drawing. And in this one I'm going to tackle some of the water. Now I'm going to be using random colours so I, if you're going to do a harborscape you need to work out what colours go best for you, okay? Because everyone has a different interpretation of colour. So I've got my reference photo and I'm going to be trying to match this green, this greeny blue, uh, blue, grey green, brown greens I think. So I'm going to do it in a little kind of segment bit and we'll see where we go. So the first thing I'm just going to quickly do is work out where my edge was, which is about there. Okay, I'll probably go over my edge just to um, make it all fluffy and easier to edit at the end of the day. Right. So I'm thinking of starting with a G000 but uh, I might change it as we go. And the fun bit is I've got to move with the actual image as well. Some of these colours aren't going to show very well up on the camera, so apologies in advance. And because most of my pens are nearly dry, it's uh, probably going to make it even harder to see. I don't want to make it too bright, but at the same time I don't want to make it too um, too lime greeny. And these base coats are literally just going to be there to uh, cover the white up. This is quite a bold colour. I'm probably going to push it back quite a lot once I've put it down. I'm still on two minds on this colour. This is one I had to get on a special order. using the chisel now just to make sure that I get that completely covered over and just saturate that colour down. So uh, BG93 is 
like a bluish green but it's a very subtle one my colours aren't gonna look 100% right at first but hopefully as I blend them through they should start to work in one way or another Lots of blues and twos going on. Mind you, with all this uh, high, high heat in the 30s plus, uh, a lot of people are struggling with it. It's not good weather. definitely don't sound good. A few days ago we had somebody uh, take a jump from one of the pleasure piers. Uh, I don't know if he jumped off the building, one of the buildings on there, if he just jumped off, but either way he's uh, mangled his spine and uh, mangled his neck. Yeah, hot weather makes people do weird things. Hopefully you can see where I put that grey, green spots, uh, where I put the greenish greys down, uh, that's blended in and it's gone right back. So I'm just going to push that colour slightly. Well, remember it is not to do straight lines with the water. Oh, it's a hot heat today. Okay, so I'm giving that a few seconds just to dry. And I'm going to bring in another colour. I'm going to try and bring in a YG into this. I think it's 99. And just see how this reacts. This is a little bit dark. I'm going to push it back with the kind of marine colour. In fact, actually, it might work really well with the shadow here. Let's see what happens.
think I do need to add a wash of green over this. I'm starting to try and pick up those colours and see where they're going. I mean, the water is not going to be exact on this, but if I can get the direction right, then it should be okay. I'm just trying to pick up the directional lines. of the two colours and just blend that all out. I don't want it to be too harsh. I'm going to bring back in the blue green and just pick up a couple of areas. I need a more screen. Okay, bring in a couple more greens. Nothing too vibrant. Happier now. I wasn't one hundred percent sure how blue blue it is and how green is because there's mixes of kind of blue patches and green patches. But because I've got that kind of um, greyish green behind it, that gives me quite nice undercoats.
thing. Put those up here. I didn't do the best of uh, line drawings of this one, I just got tired. So this is uh, not going to be as easy as I would like it. Just checking a couple of things, right? So I think I'm going to use a B with lots of zeros on it, and this is the undercoat again because uh, this area starts to get the hints, more hints of blue. Sorry about the shaking; my desk is uh, very wobbly. Once again, this is just the underpainting, more detail will grow, go on, and I'll build up much more tonal length and variation. So I've got my directional lines in. So if that's a white bit, I go red, green. So you can see I'm moving a lot of colours around and I'm just literally looking at the drawing trying to spot areas that I need to pick up or areas that I might need to change and just blocking them in. With this one I'm not going quite so photorealistic as the first one that I did of the boats. But I still need it to be identifiable as like the location and all that. can hear squishing and clicking sounds that is my feet I my ankles constantly crunch it's walking in bare feet hilarious and it's uh, too hot for socks at work I wear about five layers and that's working with ovens as well 
but today is a nice day off so I'm in the shorts chilling out with some artwork off me up a couple of shadows lovely thing about Copics once they dry if you add another layer you get uh, more depth of color which is always nice For things like reflections, you can really get uh, all of the depth into the image. Out stretch. It's important to keep stretchy while doing drawings. I'm just going to soften that a little bit up a bit. So these bits of boats. I'm probably going to use the uh, BV quadruple zero for the shadows on these because I've got the purple starting in the this part up here and they'll also be here on the gang walk but there's going to be some reflection off so even though this might appear white the back of the boat there's going to be colours within the reflection. I need to work out where I put the marks on my drawing because I made a slight mistake up here. Right. So this bit of the boat goes round. That bit goes there. There's a. What I've forgotten is there's a uh, boat between the two boats, and I've only mapped in one boat. So I need to map in the other boat. So if you're going to do a uh, drawing and colour it and such, try and make sure that you've got everything mapped out. I'm pretty sure that's right. The bits of white I can come through with a Posca marker and add in, which is really handy because there is a lot of white on this drawing. I know I could leave it all blank, but I kind of feel that I'm going to miss out if I do that. I just realised there's actually a guy still on one of these boats. That's weird. Hmm. Didn't see him when I was taking the photos. Oh well. And put in some of the base colour for this boat. Then I know where I am. I 
and the same for the little blue one on the end. Have a dirt base coat. Now this is the blue that I'm going to end up bringing in. Just to add to the water. And add a couple of little bits of fill in over here as well. Sorry about the lights. Um, I currently don't have. Uh, no, that's made it worse than that. I don't have curtains currently in this room. So bear with me. I'll just block out as much as possible. Uh, where is it? I don't really want curtains in here because I love the natural daylight but on the other hand when the sun hits a certain point it hits uh, over the roads cars and then I get the bounced light everywhere so uh, it's a tricky one can see the colours of well hopefully you can see the colours are really softening down and blending in and that's really what I want this undercoat to do I'm trying to do just here is catch the shadow within the shadow um, which is within the reflection
while that's drying I'm just going to add a little bit more tone down here just to start to add and block in some of the areas So I've mapped out that shadow, so I'm happy with that. But I'm going to take, let's see, I just need to spot where the harbour wall was. I really, really do need to pay more attention to doing my drawings. But when I'm in a rush, I kind of just, well, rush them. But then you shouldn't always rely on your line drawing. Like, you are complacent. I mean, you can do colouring in uh, images and stuff without the actual lines and it does give a completely different view of things. I have my star starting to blow up.
So for now I'm going to let that sit. I need to rework in the lines. I know roughly what's up here, but I just need to play around with the lines. And I'm just going to do this little bit of bulb walk here. So to do the bulb walk, first colour I'm going to put down is the BB. So we're matching the colour that was on the path. I'm just going to do it up to this point. Then I'm going to go for T0. And what I'll do is to put in the lines, I'll probably 98% chance use a pencil. So right now I'm not. Oh, got some dirt on that. Uh, I'm not bothered about the direction too much. So I'm just blocking in the tones. Let's try a let's see T one. Block in some of those colours. Set the squirrel outside. Right. I'm going to come back in with the purple and just soften that down. Right. I'm going to use a N4 by looks of it and try and fix this. Majorly angry squirrels out there. What I've done there is just added in the two shadows. Bear me two seconds, I just need that to drop. Let's go T6. This isn't going to be a really, really, really dark pole. Uh, so I want it to stay still quite soft so that it, the softness goes through the drawing. Nice thing about Copix with the brush nibs, you can get really nice levels of detail. I have tried other markers like uh, the Spectrum Noir ones. I don't get on with them and I don't know why because surely an alcohol marker is an alcohol marker. Uh, but there's definitely something different about them. Uh, we don't really get on that well. In fact, those most of those are now run out and I've barely used them for anything. So I've not really found them as value for money uh, against the Copics. Uh, Copics, yes, they are much more expensive. But then again, you get what you pay for. And this applies to cheeses. Because if I want a good quality cheese, I'll pay four or five pound for it. If I want a cheap cheese that you could bounce as a ball on the floor, then I'll buy, uh, say, Tesco's own brand. So disturbing our uh, bouncy cheese. So I'm using the lilac again just to put onto this wood. Now this wood is probably one of the original 
piles that were driven in to hold up parts of the gangways and such. So they're very aged. Um, they've been bleached in the sun. They've had dogs wee on them constantly. So they're not wood coloured anymore. And yeah, even this one, because people would walk along this way, uh, you would get still the odd ammonia shower on there. I'll have to go out and sort that squirrel out in a minute. I think I get the idea of what the problem is. Basically, there's a cat out there that sat underneath the tree and has tried to get it. Or has caught a squirrel. Right, I need something slightly darker, but not too dark. Uh, T4, I reckon. I love mixing grades. I know you probably shouldn't mix them, but I just find you get a lovely effect. Much more natural effect. Not everything is cool grey and not everything is warm grey. When you mix them up you can get some really nice natural tones. That squirrel's gone quiet. Hooray! Now on the top I'm going to add a little bit of the W00. Because the sun is giving a slightly creamy light there. And I'm also going to add one of the E numbers to reflect that warmth. Now this bit here is a kind of plucky thing. So I need a brownish green. It is hot in here. Can't really have my window open because there's a lot of noise going on outside. So it is uh I is baking in here. Ooh. I have a baker who is baking. T4 to add a little bit of texture. So with this piece again, I'm probably going to add pencil detail into there, but for now I'm just softening it down and getting it close to the colour that I want. But I don't want to work too much wet on wet on this one in case it bleeds in the wrong direction. Soften that bit out. Right, so I think I'm going to call that that for now. No, I'm not. I need to sort this out now. Bear with me. Let's go in my hands. So I say it is sweat. I am sweating like a hedgehog in here. I 
I don't want to get any excess fluid onto this drawing, so having a towel to draw my hands off also makes it easier to control the pens. I need to definitely start to play with this, so. Okay, we're going to set the bar as just there. Oh, that blue. I know roughly what it looks like, but I don't... Oh, do I have a mid-tone for that? Hmm. Let's go for a really random colour. Okay, this is probably going to look really scary. Actually, that is going to be really scary. We can blend that tiny bit out. Oh, that's too cyan-y. Quickly blend that out. I do need the purple in there. Uh, I'm thinking B32. I've gone for this because it's got a little bit of the kind of purple hinting in it, but not tons, and I can make that as darker as I want to. And it's also a different type of blue to the ship's blue. happy with that. Right, so I need to soften out my lines. So, line softening. Let's get them reactivated. Now, instead of using the Sharpest part of the pen, I'm now using slightly the kind of the side bit. Came with that green again. I'm just literally making little kind of dash movements. And then I'm just gonna make some little flicking marks just into this bit because that is where uh, there is a slight change and a couple of detailed lines not too many 
was I lose the softness? That's the only thing I need. I'm hoping it's going to work. Right, this might seem a little bit strong, so I should be able to push it back. Goes down this bit. And then once I put my highlights through and the white, then it should balance it all out. Now up the top there's quite a dark area so I'm just going to add that quickly in and that'll be the wall so that's where the lifeboat holds up. The lovely thing about Copics is you can work them back forward, back forward and just get the exact tonal range that you're actually after. You can get sharp lines, soft lines, so diverse. Just going to block in a couple of lumps of colour. So for now I'm going to call that done and then what I'll do is I'll come through with another layer once this is dried and then I'll pick out some of the detail and I'll start to pick out some of the detail with pencils but I'll be using probably my favourite Castell 9000 series or a type of automated pencil depends on how much detail I really really want to add in. Like I say, uh, doing this, you can play around so much with the colours and it's well worth having a bit of a go and seeing what you can create. And every single result is going to be different. And it's up to you to, uh, what colours you pick because you need to interpret those colours. And it doesn't matter if uh, you've never done it, that's part of the fun is actually having a go and trying something different. So till next time, take care everybody and happy drawing.